Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to evening prayer. Um, Sister Emily has asked us to lift her parents up um, in prayer tonight as well um, because she had been talking to them too about the vaccine and all the stuff that we've all been looking at and she said that she thought they seemed like they were on the right track but decided to go ahead and go get it anyway. She's asking the Lord to watch over them and protect them. Guys, I want to make something very, very clear. If a person who is a Christian gets this vaccine and there are side effects to this thing, he will protect them through that. Now, depending on the situation, he may let them go through something concerning that particular issue. That we don't know because that's God's will on how that stuff works out. But he will see everyone through. Um, I know several people uh, here on this channel that had to take because of their job. Um, God's not going to look down on you for doing that. It's not the mark of the beast. It's not like it's the end of the world. I'm not taking it for the simple fact that of the severe side effects that can come from this. If anybody's going to have them, I'm going to have them. So I'm not interested in that because I don't want to go through that. I go through enough pain every minute of every day anyway. I don't want to make it worse. I don't want to have to add something to that. That's my personal conviction. That's what I've decided for me personally. You know, the information I've seen tells me I really don't want to partake in this. God will not condemn someone for taking this. Like I said, they may go through some stuff. It depends. It's whatever his will is. But he's going to watch over people and help people. Just like we covered in Hosea, what he said in Hosea 14. I, I will forgive their backsliding and I will bring them to me. God is an all-loving God. He's not looking for someone to go, oh, gotcha, you messed up, and then condemn somebody. He's not looking for that. His desire is to forgive, and his desire is to strengthen. So even though we have people around us that are taking this, and it concerns us, and it, it, it hurts us, and just like the title of these this article here, uh, we feel overwhelmed because we feel like we're talking and talking and talking, and nothing's happening. No one's listening. No one's paying attention. But people are paying attention. The whole idea, and you can go into the Old Testament and look at this, all the men who were called up, and even the women who were called up to serve God in a, in a specific way, all suffered through the same thing. Being overwhelmed, being defeated, feeling like nobody was listening. And in every instance, and most notably was Jeremiah, but in every instance, God said, just do what I gave you to do. Don't worry about that. I'll take care of that. You know, Jeremiah was 40 years and not a single person listened. He was, he's the weeping prophet. Everybody knows about Jeremiah. And he had a miserable life. And God told him, he was like, I give up. This is it. It's worthless. Even Isaiah, even Elijah did the same thing. God said, just do what I told you to do. Just do what I gave you to do. I will take care of that. I will deal with that. See, it may be that the people we talk to may not be the ones that he's directly contacting. It could be somebody through them. So we don't know how God works completely. We don't understand fully what he's thinking is. But we can sure grasp a few glimpses and a few hints of it. The seeds we plant today will sprout in the fires of the tribulation. And unfortunately, some people may have to go through some of that in order for them to come full circle. There's many people that they may believe, but they're just not quite there. They need a little more. Well, he's going to prove it to them. He's going to prove himself. He's going to show himself. Unfortunately, it may take people seeing a full view of the coming tribulation before they actually decide, uh-oh, I had better get this taken care of. Our desire is just like his desire. We want him to get, get it done now, but we're not as smart as God is. God is way smarter than us, and he knows more about their hearts than we do. So we love them. We care for them. We're there for them. If, like if anybody I know gets that thing and they get sick, whether I like them, agree with them, whether we're talking or not, I'm there to help them with whatever they need. Because I know how I would feel if I made a mistake and it came back to bite me and nobody was there to help me. So I'm there to help people if they need it. I'm always praying for and watching over these people. I talk. Sometimes it doesn't re register. And I've learned, because God has taught me the patience, I've learned not everybody's going to listen. 
It's still frustrating. It's still dis, you know, discouraging. It's still you know, overwhelming sometimes. But when you go and you look around and you find other people that are talking about the same thing, saying, I'm, I feel like I'm talking to no one. We're all on that boat. Because we don't have any credibility. But our God has a surprise for the world. He said, they're going to say, hey, since the fathers fell asleep, things have been this, this, the same way. Things have been going on for 2,000 years. Why would it change now? That's exactly the reason why it would change. He has a surprise for everybody, and it's going to snap them out of their sleep. And they will turn and they will get saved. That's proven by chapter 7 of the book of Revelations. It talks about the great multitude. These are the people we are talking to now. The ones that don't really want to cross over to the side of light, but are intrigued by it, and seeds are being planted. It'll be that rapture and those seals that are going to change their minds and bring them to repentance. And that's what we hope for at the very least. So we got to keep everything in perspective. And we have to look at it from a sober adult mind. We have to look at it from, a, from an adult standpoint because nothing is going to go outside of God's will. We may not necessarily agree or like that concept, but what we do know is that if it's going according to God's will, it's right, it's true, and it's justice. And we can bank on that. So on this, this is guidepost.org, six Bible verses for when you feel overwhelmed. And I'm not actually going to read the article, I'm just going to read the verses. First one is Matthew 19, 26. It says, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. We know no matter what happens, even if we fail in faith, if we're his, we don't lose what we have. He's going to pick us up and strengthen us because of his love and compassion that he has for us. His heart is so much bigger than ours. He understands through Jesus Christ. He understands how hard it is here. Look at how hard of a Jesus, a time Jesus had. And he wasn't born of man. He was unique among humans. He was one of a kind. Can you imagine how harder, how much harder it is for us being born into the original sin, being born into this world as a sin being? Now, of course, nobody's going to suffer as much as Jesus is going to suffer. But he has a very unique insight into this in that you can't say, well, you don't know what I went through. Well, he knows exactly what we went through. Because he went through it too. That's why he says no one will have an excuse on that day. We, and we won't. So even though we see the things happening that were happening that are happening today, even though it's discouraging, even though it's impossible to find anywhere where we can have face-to-face -face fellowship, nothing is impossible for him who has saved us and who keeps us saved. Isaiah 40, 31 says, But they... That wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. We have a new day coming, guys. And when that day dawns, everything will look so different to us. Three, God promises to restore our soul in Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28. He promises us, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. What rest is he giving us? Well, the first rest we have is here, being saved, coming to the place in, through our sanctification process where we don't worry. It's still, we have fear, we still are concerned, but we don't have worry like the other people do. We don't worry about things like the unbelieving people do, like the earth dwellers do. To them, it's the end of the world. But to us, we're just one day closer to going home. Totally different perspective. And in Philippians 4, 6 through 7, he promises to give us peace. Be careful for nothing. Look what he says. Be careful for nothing. What does that mean? Don't worry about it. I will help you. That's why if, if somebody pops up and they have coronavirus, but they need help, nobody else wants to go help, I'm going there. If they want me to wear a mask, I'll wear a mask. If they want me to wear gloves, I'll wear gloves. I'm not worried. I will go there. Be careful for nothing. If somebody needs help, I'm going to go there and be a help for them. If I get sick, I get sick. I'm not worried about it. 
What does he say in, in, in response to this? In addition to it, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So if we see something that's going down, when everybody else is scared to deal with it, we don't have to be. We know God will watch over us. That applies to this whole vaccine thing. Some people are in a position where if they don't get that vaccine, it may actually stop their ministry. It may stop everything they're doing. God's not going to condemn them because they got that. Now, the, the bigot, because that's not an issue. It's the fact that they don't believe and have salvation is the issue. That's the focus that God's on. I want them saved. I'll deal with the rest of this later. I want them saved. Got to get them saved and blood bought first. After that, God will sanctify them. He get, He's done it to every one of us. Let me get them saved. Let me get them sealed. Let me get them washed in the blood first. Then, after they're forgiven, then I can work on them. That's what the age of grace is for. Um, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Once we know these things, once we realize these things, and we can look down the road spiritually and see, okay, God's got this. I, I see where we're going here. There is a peace that falls on us. I can't even describe it. It's really gotten strong here lately. There's a peace that falls on us, and it's just, you'll be watching the, You'll be watching the nuclear missile come into your city. It's like, whoop, it's time to go home. Everybody else be running and screaming. Where are you going to run to? You can't get away from it. Well, time to go home. We just, our perspective is different because of what we know and because what God has done in our lives. Because of our perspective now is so different than the world's perspective. Number five, 1 John 4, 4. Ye are of God, little children. Remember that. Ye are a, you are a child of God. Once you are born again and sealed, you are born again as a child of God. Walk as such. Walk as such. Look at your life and say, you know what? I know that God, that doesn't make God happy. I'm going to get rid of that. I know that doesn't, you know what, Father? You show me the things that, that don't make you happy that are in my life, and I'll do everything I can to get rid of them. And I will also pray for strength to get rid of those so that I can walk more circumspectly to your will. That should be a natural desire of a child to their God. Father, I want to walk according to your will and have overcome them. Let me start again. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It's funny a lot of people don't like the way this comes out, but I only know one way to say it. It's funny, but we are, quote unquote, gods among men. Not gods in the sense of we have control over things, but our state is different now than what it was before we were saved. That current state that we are in sets us apart from the rest of the people around us. And they can't see it because their eyes aren't open to the light. But in the spiritual realm, our light is emanating brightly from us. That light that is the Holy Spirit that is within us is emanating from us. And those spiritual beings can see it. And some of us, it's going so strong, it drives them away. They can't get near us. The love and compassion that we are feeling for the people that are getting this vaccine, for the people that are suffering and dying needlessly, for the people that are wandering away from the Lord and going as far as they can, for the people that are mocking and scoffing, all the things the Bible says, the love and compassion we have is the same love and compassion Christ had 2,000 years ago when he stood on this earth and watched it happen with his own eyes. Seeing the very prophecy spoken of him being fulfilled. He already knew it was going to happen, but then he got to see it with human eyes. He got to see such a very special perspective on this. That's what makes him so unique and makes him the perfect high priest. He can make intercession for us. He can make intercession for anyone. God said, not only will I bless you, I will bless those around you because my blessings will pour out so heavy that they won't be contained by just you. It's going to spread everywhere. And he's told us, I want you to have that kind of heart that doesn't matter whether they're doing the right thing or not. It doesn't matter whether they're doing good or not. What matters is love them. Those, those strongholds will be broken down by love. When it's all said and done, 
everything is going to come out in the wash. Those who are saved, those who aren't, it's all going to come out in the wash. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to lose sight of what's important now. Honestly, the, the issue with the vaccine isn't that big a deal. I'm not taking it because there's no reason for me to take it. I've looked at the information. I've made my decision based on my conviction. Everyone has to make their own decision, and I do not look down on anybody that does it. But we will pray for them and ask God to watch over them and protect them so they don't have those side effects, so they don't have a negative reaction. We want our Father to protect them like he protects us. And finally, number six, in Psalm 142, 3, it says, When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then you knew my path. God is very attentive to all of us, especially now. As close as we are, he's very attentive to the mourning within us, to the mourning in our spirit, to the tears we shed, to the concerns that we have. Because as the, as his love is shed abroad in our hearts, as we express that love in the various ways to, that they are to be expressed to the people around us, and even though we see things still going the wrong way, but that peace is still there, but we still have concerns, God is right there watching over us, keeping things in check, making sure that we have what we need and the strength that we need to carry on. So if you have somebody in your life that you see, they're denying, they're, they're going a different path, the, the fact that, they're, that our parents are trying to hide from us that they're taking the vaccine should tell you something. Because a lot of us, are that's what our parents are doing, they're hiding it from us, that should tell you something. You've been put in, in a position and they look at you and have re enough respect for you that they don't want you to be concerned. It's a way of loving. It may be based in fear. It may be based in intimidation. I don't know. But it's a way of them loving you. They don't want to concern you. Now They, don't mean, they may not realize what they're doing to themselves. But they don't want to concern you. That's love. They love you. Let's love them back. And let's lift them up in prayer. Lord, we come before you this evening in your blessed name. Thank you for a beautiful day. I wasted the whole day inside because I was sore, but that's okay. You'll give us more. Thank you for opening up your word to help us. Thank you for giving us this peace that defies all understanding. Lord, we lift up our parents, all of us that have them. Emily has put in a specific prayer request. I'm going to lift my parents up and everybody who has parents who have gone and gotten this vaccine and tried to hide it from us because they didn't want us to be concerned. Lord, we ask that you please, please watch over them and strengthen them and protect them. When you pour your blessings out on us, we know it spills over to everyone around us. Lord, please, please put that protection on them. We don't want to see them suffer and we don't want to see them go through these things unnecessarily. Now we know that your will is going to be done regardless. We know that all authority has been put into your hands, but we beseech you so please have mercy on them and watch over them because we don't want them to have to go through unnecessary suffering. No matter what, we pray that your will is done in these things because we know that will be justice. We know that will be truth. We pray that the blessings you pour out on us will spread to everyone and that they will see the light that emanates from us because of the Holy Spirit and then they will see the 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 attitude and, and what's the other word? Aptitude? I don't know. Aptitude. The things that are of you coming from us, and it will cause them to wonder and cause them to stop and think, and maybe, hopefully, it'll cause them to look at you, and then look for you, and then call out to you, so that they may be saved. This world is crazy right now. Everybody's scared to move, to speak, to do anything. Now more than ever, we need people that are bold in the truth to stand up and say, no, this is the truth. It doesn't mean people are going to listen or do it. It doesn't mean they're going to acknowledge it. I've come to this painful truth recently. 
Just because you tell the truth doesn't mean people are going to acknowledge it or respond to it. Nevertheless, Lord, I pray that that conviction is on us to speak that truth, but to love them regardless. Even if they make fun of us, even if they mock us, even if they go behind our backs, even if they do exactly the opposite of what they should do, because we warn them. We still pray that we will love them and show them your love. I pray that your love is expressed in our actions every day. That the way we walk, the way we live, the way we communicate is an inspiration to those around us. They may not like us, they may not like you know who we are or what we believe in, but it will still affect them in a positive way because sometimes just being there and do, being us can be enough to plant a seed. And we know that it, when the tribulation starts, those seeds are going to sprout and you will give the increase. So many people are struggling now. So many people are stumbling now. So many people are walking away. People that everybody thought they had faith, turned out they didn't have faith, are walking away. Lord, we ask you to strengthen the hearts of those in the faith. Strengthen the resolve and the wherewithal of those in the faith and settle the truth in their hearts of all these things. We pray that your will be done no matter what. We love you. We bless you. We shower you with praise and honor. And in your name we pray, amen. Thank you guys for joining me for evening prayer. Love them, love them, love them. You don't have to like what they do. You don't have to like what somebody says. But you can still love them. You can get on to somebody and let them know how you feel, but you can still love them. Our Father in heaven, he chastises us, but he still loves us. Don't, don't deny people the truth. Give them the truth. Don't be afraid of the reaction you get. The blessing you lay upon them by doing so will be worth it. And if it gets them to heaven, it's definitely worth it. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I will see you in the next video.